It's been a blessing. You're the best people in the world. I thank you for watching over me and taking care of me and making sure and praying to God that I make this. <laughs> and I made it. <laughs> um, I got a big shock when I got there, you know. Um, I expected to see sad children, shy children, people that children that pulled away from from people because of what they've been through. But not the case. <laughs> These children ran up to me and hugged me and kissed me and we just fell in love right there. <laughs> it was amazing. They just open themselves up to you and it makes it so easy to, to go in and do things. And I jumped right in there. I mean, I was putting puzzles together and doing whatever they were doing and I enjoyed every minute of it. Um, you know, they have a clean place to live, they have food, they have people that care about them, they have each other. And they don't have what we have, but what they have they appreciate so much better. And the things that Miss Sherry brings for them to do, they just love all of that stuff, working with each other and playing with each other. But the next time we go to have a sewing project, I'm going to bring the needles. <laughs> I threaded so many needles you would not believe, and I can't even thread a needle at home. <laughs> but I threaded needles. It was in the dark, too. They don't have light. Today. Yeah, it's in the dark. But we're taking these needles next time. <laughs> okay. Uh, the children all have uh, jobs to do, and they do them. They play together without squabbling and fighting. You see four children playing over here, and if there's a, a question of what one wants to do and can't do it, he just gets up and goes over and does something with the other children. They don't fight, they don't cry, they don't scream at each other. All the people that are there to take care of them, take care of them. And To see this happen when you don't expect this to happen, it was just a blessing. I cried the day we left because I didn't want to leave them. I wanted to smuggle them all out. <laughs> I wanted to bring every one of them over here because they deserve so much more than what they have. But they appreciate everything that they have. And they appreciate us coming there, and they appreciate us hugging and loving them, and it, I can't explain it, but it fills your heart, and your heart grows ten times larger just by being there. So, thank y'all for letting me go. I appreciate it. Well, I just want—I just want to say, at the beginning of the mission trip, I didn't get here. Pretty sure they can. I just want to say, at the beginning of the trip, it, we went there thinking we was going to have to rip out bathrooms and showers and all this, and we do a bunch of plumbing. But when we got there, we found out it was just a hole in the shower. That's all we needed to be fixed to fix the leak that was in the boys' bathroom. It wasn't the plumbing, so I didn't have to rip out any of the showers or anything like that. I just got some fiberglass uh, cloth and some fiberglass resin, fixed to put a couple of layers of that on there, and the hole was fixed. They had no more problems with the leak. Well, I, I needed to rip out the girl's flooring in front of the showers because it was all rusted, rotted out, and they was about ready to fall through. Well, the first three days we was there, it rained on us, so I wasn't able to set up to do it, but I felt the Lord had something else for us to do at the time. We wasn't taking time to to check our surroundings and help fellow churches that was in the community of Del Rio. So he made us take, take a rest, a couple of rest days until we actually figured out what he wanted from us. But once we figured out what he wanted from us, he gave us sunshine and clear days. And I was able to get in there, uh, rip out the, all the flooring, the step up, the tile, all that, get all that ripped out, get new stuff put down, and 
front of the showers and everything, so they had a firm foundation to walk on when they got in and out of their showers. And now they got tile, brand new tile, brand new flooring, brand new step up, and the Lord made a way. I, and I, honestly, I didn't see it in the beginning. I was a little, I, I got a little frustrated because I wasn't able to get in there and do what, what was intended to be done. And uh, we what, spent three months planning this, oh, yeah. and, uh, and I was able to knock it out in two days. I, I did the flooring, got it all ripped out in one day, and the new flooring put back in one day. Then I got to do all the tile and everything the next day. So the Lord made a way. Even though I was a little frustrated and I didn't think I was going to get it all done, He found a way. He told us, look, this is what y'all need to do, concentrate on. And we did what, what He asked of us. And after that, He made a way. It, it cleared everything up. The sun came out. Clouds disappeared. And we got time to play. They got time to spend with the kids. We got time to do the work that needed to be done. And just give the Lord all the praise and credit for everything we got done. Thank you all. To be honest with you, I don't really have a whole, whole lot to say. Uh, yes, otherwise, we would be here all day. <laughs> uh, but, you know, uh, we had a conversation uh, at the group with, uh, with Granny B, the lady that runs the Mission House. Uh, we did our devotionals every day and everything. And the conversation was brought up, the subject of rich being rich and what it was like to be rich. And, yeah, these children, they don't have anything. They don't have iPhones. They don't have iPads. They don't have little music boxes. They don't have Game Boys. They don't have video games. They don't have none of that stuff. But what they do have are big hearts and lots of love. And to me, uh, that's being way more rich than anything else. These are the happiest children. And I believe that that's why because they have no choice but to focus on each other instead of what the world has to offer. Uh, there's a big difference. And going over there and seeing this live and in person, that's the only way you're really going to understand it. That's all I have to say. Well, I could have a lot more than that, but... <laughs> We, we definitely did have an unusual week in that we usually hit the ground running. We go to the orphanage and we start all of our projects. But God had another plan for us this trip. He had it rain on us. <laughs> it flooded the streets. We couldn't get across the border because of all of the rain we had. We had to stay in. So... The one day, Tapita was nervous that she didn't want to drive in the flood, so we went without her, and the streets in Mexico got washed out, which was probably a good thing she didn't go. She would have probably freaked out. But um, John does good driving through bumpy roads. And, um, it's usually fairly smooth going through, but we found out that the reason it's so smooth is there rocks and the sand all flattened out there and when it rains, which is very unusual for that part of the country, it just washes all the sand and the rocks out and then the rocks on the side of the roads and stuff roll down and get into the road and we have little speed bumps and we have potholes big enough to lose a truck in and so it was kind of treacherous. So then it rained for the second day. We decided we're not going to try that again. If it was that bad going that day, then the next day was even going to be worse. So we stayed in. But because we did that, God sent Miss Carol, or Catalina, to talk with us about helping a small church, Temple, Temple Baptist but uh, Iglesias or how yeah, Iglesias. And they're a very small church. They had, what, five pews on each side, I think, right? Very, very small. But they were in need of some sheetrock repair to their ceiling. And um, we 
we decided that that's where God wanted us. So Henry and John went and got the, all the materials that we needed, but because we were working at the orphanage, we weren't able to do the work. But they, were, they had people in their church that would do the work, so we felt like if we got the stuff, if they couldn't afford to buy for them, that they could get their people to do the work on their church and fix it. So we bought sheetrock, mud, and tape, and paint. Yeah. And, plastic. and plastic to cover the pews up so they wouldn't mess that up. And we, we spent less than $200, right? Yeah, I think it's $158. Yeah. So it didn't cost us a whole lot, but they were very, very appreciative of it. And that evening, the Lord put it on my heart that we need to add the Temple Baptist to our mission. So we're going to have mission when we go to Mexico. People that want, don't want to cross the border, that you want to stay in Del Rio, we're going to be able to work there at their little church and help them out. And they don't have, it's not, like I said, it's not a big one, they have outdoor bathrooms. I mean, it's indoor plumbing, but it's outdoors. <laughs> And they have no cover to get to it from church. So if you have to go in the rain, you just got to walk in the rain to get to the bathrooms. So we thought about maybe the next trip, if we have enough people that would like to go and work on Temple Baptist, that we'll build a cover awning from their church porch over to their bathrooms. And then those people that come and do that work there, We'll be able to decide what we need to do the next trip, and we'll just work our way through this and help them with growing their little church. Um, they're kind of in the same situation our church was here. Their pastor had died, and a younger man there had started the pastoring, so they had lost some membership, and they're rebuilding, so they're in a process of, of making a church there, and I would... Love to see our church, sister church with them. Um, I love the kids, you know. I had a wonderful time with them in Mexico, and I'm looking forward to going back. We have a scheduled date for spring break in March while school's out, so more of y'all can go. And then we'll go again in the summer that we've already got reserved at Granny B's for that. Um, there is a... There's a, two girls and a boy in Mexico. The government has released them to be adopted. It's, she's, let's see, 15, 13, and 9. The little boy's 9. Um, it's her, it's called, their names are from abusive parent that had, um, I don't know how to say it, but used them for favors, I guess. And um, when they didn't want to cooperate, they were burned with cigarettes. They were in yeah, they were in the sex trafficking. But um, they need a home. And if y'all know anyone's interested in adoption, please pray about it and think about taking one little family of the sweetest children that deserve a good life here. Okay. I don't know if Evelyn's changed any of the pictures up here for you to look at, but you can look at all of these kids up here, and every one of them yeah. is looking for love. You know, the one that's sitting in my lap, she would not let me go. <laughs> and her name is Mary. And uh, she has a mother that works there. But she's looking for a grandpa. She, she just hung on to me, and I'm, I'm too old to be a daddy, so she hung on to me as a grandpa. And she's just looking for a man in her life. And that's what I found in all the ministries that I've been in through the years, that these kids are looking for fathers, because they do not have fathers in their life. And most of these are stories that they tell, the fathers have sold them into something. And it's, it's amazing how they can sell a child in, into something for just a little bit of money. 
I know we was in Guatemala one time, and this guy was selling his daughter for 75 Q, which is about five bucks in America. And how can you be that desperate to sell your child for five dollars? These are the things that we run into in these mission trips that just break your heart. But as we said before, I've tried to talk to people that didn't want to go into Mexico, that said there's plenty of things to do in Del Rio, but now we've established something to do in Del Rio. There's so many little churches like this that need help. And that's what the God's told me that last night we were there, that that's what we're supposed to do. And he told me about making a video so we can send to all these larger churches there in Del Rio so they can start this mission to uh, help these little churches. And the words he uses to me, he said, I don't want to give a hand out. I want to give them a hand up. Because he tells me that the, uh, the harvest is, is plenty, but the workers are few. Once we get these churches on their feet with the money that they do have, they can go out and do evangelism and get these people saved. Because the time is coming. Jesus Christ is coming fast. You know, most of us don't want him realize, you know, even think about Jesus coming back. But when he does, we have no more time. And that's the things we're looking at. But there's plenty of people that are sitting in these pews, and there's plenty of people that's out here that can go with us. You know, I think Granny B said, what, 38 people can stay there? I know we can get 22, but she can make room. Well, that's okay. She said she can make room. But if you go with us as mission house, you're going to be in church every day with Granny B. She's like Miss Martha here. She's got a verse for everything. And she always gives me four fingers. She said, nothing but kind words are spoken in this house. I said, yes, ma'am. But it's a fun thing, and um, you have to go and experience for yourself. I was standing up here trying to explain it to you. You will never get it. But you just have to experience it. And once you're in the mission field, God's going to use you in certain ways. And each one of us is going to have a different way to be used. You know, that's the thing you said. We all have a calling. We're all called to something different. But it all takes us each and every one. To make a cake, you can't just put flour in and say, I've got a cake. you got to have eggs, milk, and somebody to stir it up. And, and that's the way it is. God's going to stir you up. He's going to stir the people up. And now, now I'm trying to preach your ear. <laughs> Guys, if anybody here wants more information about the Mexico mission trips and what they're doing out there, or if you're interested in going uh, and taking and being a part of that, uh, just get with you know either Grandma Sherry or Grandma John here. Um, but that's all we have for today, so I guess we just release one, two, three, hallelujah. One, two, three. Hallelujah.